All right, let's go okay, for it. All right. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay, that didn't hurt that much. The three different episodes, they were all sort of in the wasteland. Um, and we had to try and keep them consistent, even though we were filming some in the Flinders, some in a warehouse at Port Adelaide. We brought elements in from the Flinders uh, to the other episodes as well, just like uh, the you know, colour of the dirt. We sort of, we brought buckets from the Flinders. So it was sort of difficult because Cassie and I were sort of working together, trying to get like an overall look that was one wasteland. We were lucky enough to get the house location that was already abandoned. So we were able to smash out more of the walls and the roof that was falling in, um, really dirty up the floor and the walls with shellac and um, the bathroom, smash tiles, rip up carpet and bloodstained concrete floors. And we didn't have to fix it afterwards, which was fantastic because the house was getting demolished. The downside to that was the fact that it was completely unfurnished and these characters were hoarders. It took probably about four days with a team of work experience people, myself and a few professionals that were willing to lend a hand, which was great. Vivian requested that a lot of the lighting be done by candlelight or by lantern. The gas lanterns became a bit of a problem. The smell of the kerosene became quite overwhelming inside a poorly ventilated set for, we were shooting in there for, I think, four days or something. Episode three, we shot in um, a warehouse at Port Adelaide. It was an old sort of abandoned warehouse that sort of had nothing in it. So we were pretty lucky in what we could do in there. We had lots of people helping actually. We had four days in there sort of building both the set. We used a lot of chicken wire and timber and bits of metal and material. And we just sort of threw them together because it was a place where, you know, it's the wasteland, there's not many materials, so these people have found any materials that they could to make these jail cells. We're really lucky to have um, the pillars at the Port Adelaide location. Um, sort of, we, we made like a rectangular sort of um, fight pit using cyclone fencing um, and it, sort of any other fencing that we could find and just sort of to make it look a little bit more menacing, like the people inside the pit couldn't get out, we put a barbed wire around the fencing. We sort of just added bits of old and new bloodstains, um, signs, and the extras really added to it as well. For the scrapyard location, Vic uh, referred to District 9 a lot, so we tried to get that feeling that the scrapyard was lived in by people with some sort of character. We tried to personalise it by making some sort of gang signs around, hanging and placing like more comfortable materials like mats and fabrics in Hessian and things like that. The fake Sunny was a request from Vic so that the actor wouldn't get hurt while we were shooting the fight scenes. Essentially she was made of a teddy bear. We had a lot of trouble uh, getting the dummy to stick to the back of the panda. We still couldn't do it that many times because every single time bits of the costume were flying off or, you know, the backpack or, you know, the leg looked a little bit weird because of the, the stuffing and the stockings and the teddy had moved and it, it looked strange. It was really interesting hanging all the meat for the opening of that scene. Got like a whole cow rib and a whole lot of different um, organs and things like that. And um, yeah, let that go unrefrigerated for a few days. And then it went a bit gross and then hung it up and yeah, it stank a bit, but it looked great. The fact that they're forced to eat rancid meat shows um, just how cutthroat the wasteland is.